Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation to speak at this seminar. So I will talk about some recent work, some paper which is on the archives in last month, and it is a joint work with Lydia Argus, which was supposed to speak uh, today, but which unfortunately cannot, so I'm replacing her. So what this talk is about is about a comparison of two notions of dualities. So the one which in the title is called Goncha, for Goncha of Dual Cluster, and the one which is related to gross zebert mirror symmetry. So I will first talk about the foreground of duality for cluster varieties. So it is a fact that so-called cluster varieties come in pairs, usually denoted by A, and X. And as I will review, it is essentially a combinatorial duality, closely related to toric geometry. Then I will talk about a different, a pretty different kind of duality, which is mirror symmetry. And more precisely, a specific construction in mirror symmetry due to Gross and Zilbert. Which is a construction taking as input some log Calabria pair. And producing some mirror family. And the point of this construction is that it's not entirely combinatorial, but it takes as input some enumerative geometry. And then the main result would be comparison, a precise statement comparing these two stories. So there will be some main result. saying that if you look at the mirror of a log Calabria compactification of X or A, you will get some degeneration of A or X. Okay, so this thing is some of the plan of my talk. I will start reviewing the cluster side of the story. Then I will say something about the gross zebert mirror construction. And the main point of uh, this talk is a comparison between uh, the two stories. Okay, so I start by saying a few words about cluster varieties. So they, they are algebraic varieties and they come from the study of cluster algebras. Introduced by uh, Fomin Zalewinski with uh, representation theoretic motivation. And then the geometric uh, point of view on cluster varieties is roughly due to Falk and Gonshoff. Well, motivations related to uh, the study of uh, modular space of local systems on topological surfaces. So, but in this talk, I will not really uh, care about this motivation coming from representation theory or study of modular spaces. I will just look at cluster varieties themselves. Okay, so what are they? They are algebraic varieties obtained by gluing tori. So they are obtained. by gluing tori along explicit birational transformation. So let me be a little bit more uh, precise. 
we will fix n some uh, lattice, so z to some power, and m uh, the dual lattice. And then the A cluster variety will be some union of tori spec C bracket M. So these things are just isomorphic to some tori C star to the N, and the tori with character lattice M and co character lattice N. Whereas the X, character, the X cluster variety will be a U, will be a union gluing of dual tori spec C bracket N. So tori with character lattice N and co-character lattice N. So, so here I have not given the full definition. I need to give you some, some uh, input data to say what how are the gluing working. And the required combinatorial data is usually called a seed. Let me call it S. And it is a data of, first of all, a skew symmetric form with integer values on N. So this thing is skew symmetric. And a basis EI of N. So out of these uh, combinatorial data, so concretely you can combine these two, these two data. Actually, the only thing which is involved here is a skew symmetric matrix the skew symmetric form applied to the basis element E i E j. So some of the input is just some skew symmetric matrix with integer coefficients. And uh, out of this input, there is some combinatorial recipe to how to write down parational maps between tori, and then by definition, a and x are the algebraic varieties obtained by gluing all the tori together according to these parational transformations. So actually, these variational transformations are volume preserving, meaning they preserve the top holomorphic form on the tori. And so A and X are naturally non compact Calabria varieties. There's so one way to think about this story that the simplest way to cook up a non-compact Calabria variety just to consider torus, this start with the N. And here cluster varieties are slightly more general classes obtained by gluing tori together according to some specific combinatorial rules. So I'm not going to give more details on this combinatorial rule because I'm actually going to give an alternative point of view on these cluster varieties. So alternative point of view. on A and X. Let me say from log Calabria varieties. So for me, by definition, a log Calabria variety is a pair, let's say X comma D, where X is a smooth productive variety And D is some uh, normal crossing divisor. Which is anti-canonical, meaning that Kx plus D is zero. And in particular, in such a case, the complement U equal X minus D is, an, is a, is a collaborative variety. 
So there's a non-compactivity, it's not empty. And a typical example of log Calabria variety is given by a pair, which is a toric pair. I'll take X sigma, some toric variety, defined by a fan sigma, and I take D sigma to be the corresponding toric boundary divisor. Then it is anti-canonical, and so this pair is like Calabria, and in this case, the complement is just a, a torus. So there is a way to construct slightly more interesting log Calabria pairs, starting from a toric pair. So you could start with x sigma, t sigma. And then if you pick some hypersurfaces, let's say hi, inside the boundary, so they are co-dimension one inside the boundary, so they are co-dimension two in X sigma. Then you can look to the blow up of uh, X sigma along the union of these hypersurfaces. So this thing is your new variety. And then you can take as new divisor the strict transform of the toric boundary. And uh, from the way the canonical divisor behaves on the blow up, you can check that this pair is again log Calabria. So this thing is a log Calabria pair. So maybe some elementary example, I could start with X sigma, D sigma coming as being the toric surface, maybe P1 cross P1. And then I want to pick a hyper surface in the boundary. So in this case, the boundary has dimension one. So hyper surface in the boundary is just a point. Let me take a point here. So I'm taking a point which is not a torus fixed point. I take a point away from the toric fixed point. And then I blow up this point. So I get a new geometry. Where well, now this point will be replaced by some exceptional divisor. And so this thing is my new geometry X and D is still a square. It is still the strict transform of the toric boundary. And for this right here, the complement u equal x minus t is no longer c star to the end, but it's something slightly more complicated. You see in this example that the complement of x minus d consists of c star squared, which was already here, the torus in the toric variety. But then we add to it some copy of a1, which is the exceptional divisor minus a point which it intersects the boundary. Okay, so what does this thing has to do with cluster varieties is that actually cluster varieties N and X can be described explicitly as complement U equal X minus D for log Calabria pairs XD obtained exactly in this way as blow up of toric varieties. And let me say, let me give you briefly the recipe so that actually now we'll have a concrete recipe for what A and X are. So if you if you care about A, you start with a fan in N, which contains the rays generated by the basis element EI. So I recall that the basis combinatorial input for cluster theory is a basis EI of N and the skew symmetric form on N. So here I'm using the basis elements to define the rest of some fan. So, so it, it, it will give me some toric variety. 
uh, drew some kind of picture like that. And in particular, each of these array correspond to some divisor di in the Turk variety. So maybe here I have di. And now inside di, I'm looking to some hypersurface, which is defined by the, some explicit equation, one plus z to the vi equal to zero, where vi is obtained by taking the skew symmetric form and contracting it with EI. So this thing is an element in the dual lattice M. Okay, so here I've described an explicit toric variety, I've described explicit hypersurfaces in the boundary, and then if you do the blow up operation, you blow up this toric variety x sigma along these hypersurfaces. And you look to the strict transform of the toric boundary, you get some log Calabrian curve. And then the theorem due to growth I can kill. Is that under some technical assumptions that I will not describe, if you look to this complement UA, which is X minus T. This thing is isomorphic to the A cluster variety up to co-dimension two. And then you have a similar story for X, which is some kind of dual story. You looked at some fun in M with rays generated now by the VI. And then roughly you blow up the hypersurfaces with equation one plus z to the ei equal to zero. And then you again have the same statement that if you call that, I don't know, x prime d prime, this is like Calabio varieties, then the complement ux, which is x prime minus d prime, is isomorphic to x up to co-dimension two. Okay, so this thing was a kind of brief introduction to the topic of cluster varieties, and I tried to give two different point of view on them. One where I was not fully explicit, saying that they are non-compact Calabio varieties obtained by gluing tori together. And then I gave a more explicit uh, description by uh, specifying concrete tori varieties, concrete low site block in the boundary, and then the cluster varieties are essentially the open part, the interior of the resulting log Calabio varieties. And now the foreground show of duality. It's about, uh, it's about, it's about properties which are exchanged when you exchange A and X. So I will not go into uh, details, so there was, there was a series of conjecture by Fagonshoff having to do with the existence of canonical basis for uh, algebra of regular functions. On these varieties. And this conjecture is naturally phrased in terms of this duality, mean, meaning that the canonical basis on A is supposed to have some relation with, with X, and conversely, canonical basis for X should have something to do uh, with A. And so as it should be more or less clear from the way I've introduced, so this duality is some kind of generalization of just toric duality. When you have a single torus, we are just looking to one torus and the dual torus with character and co-character lattice exchanged. And then duality between N and X is some kind of realization of this elementary duality. And now the goal of this talk is to make co contact between this combinatorial duality and some 
and some a priori marginal notion of duality, which is mirror symmetry. So in its original uh, formulation, mirror symmetry has to do with pairs of Calabria varieties. Let's have X Calabria. And then roughly mirror symmetry tells you that there should exist some dual, some mirror dual varieties, which is another Calabria variety. And uh, roughly the complex geometry of X should be related to the symplectic geometry of X check. And conversely, the symplectic geometry of X should be related to the complex geometry of X check. So for the purpose of this talk, I will only need a very small little piece of the full mirror symmetry story. I'll focus on a specific construction due to growth and zebra. To growth, zebra mirror construction. And it is a story which is not about checking that specific pairs of Calabria varieties are mirror in appropriate sense. But it's rather an answer to the question given the Calabria variety, how do you cook up the mirror? And uh, there is a version for compact Calabria varieties, but the thing which is relevant for this talk is a story for non compact Calabria varieties and more precisely log Calabria varieties. So we'll start with XD, log Calabria variety. And let me assume that D is maximal. Meaning containing a zero dimensional strata. So D is a normal crossing divisor. So it has a natural stratification given by Irreducible components of the divisors and intersection of the various irreducible components. And I ask uh, the existence of a zero dimensional strata. So, for example, this thing is always true if uh, XD is toric, because the torus fixed points are example, are example of such a zero dimensional stratum of the toric boundary. And it's also true if XD is obtained as blow up of toric variety in the way I've described by blowing up hypersurface in the toric boundary, because in this case D is a strict transform, so you still have zero dimensional strut. So, so the assumption is true for the kind of lock calibre varieties that we're interested in. Okay, so this thing is the input of the construction. And then the output is a mirror family. And in complete generality, this mirror family, let me call it X check, will be some formal, some kind of formal scheme living over some formal base, which is a formal spectrum of some ring of, roughly ring of power series, C double bracket any of X, where any of X is a monoid spanned by effective curve classes, in the group 
of curve classes modulo numerical equivalence. So uh, just to remark, so why do you expect the mirror to be a family over such a base having something to do with the monoid of curve classes on X? It is related to this uh, general uh, expectation that under mirror symmetry, the symplectic geometry of X should be related to the complex geometry of X check. In particular, the space of the most symplectic or Keller parameters of X should be a space of complex moduli, complex parameters for X check. So you do not expect the mirror of a Calabio X to be a single algebraic variety, but you already expect it to be a family of algebraic varieties parameterized by a base, which is related to some of the space of possible classes of symplectic or Keller forms on X. And this monoid of effective curve classes is some kind of algebra geometric version of the Keller cone of X. Okay, so let me just try it again. So add this input, which is XD. And this output, which is this mirror family, living over SPF, the double bracket M X. And this construction takes as input enumerative geometry of X D. So I will not give uh, details at all. I will just just give some kind of picture. If I have x, x d, this pair, and then the kind of enumerative geometry which is relevant is given by counting rational curves. So you are supposed to count rational curves. In X, meeting D in a single point. So, as I've drawn this picture, I've drawn some kind of red curve. And this red curve, first of all, it should be a rational curve. And it has a property that its intersection with D consists of a, of a single point. So just to give a small ID, in the example, at some point I draw P1 cross P1 with its toric boundary. And you can check that in the toric case, there is no such a curve, rational curve meeting the toric boundary in a single point. Because for example, if I try to draw a curve like that, touching the boundary in this single point, then essentially by topological or homological constraints, this curve necessarily needs to intersect the boundary divisor in some other point. So for example, this P1 fiber touches the boundary in two points, and it's impossible to draw a curve in this picture meeting the boundary in a single point. But if I consider a more interesting lock calibre variety obtained by this blow up operation of a point on the boundary creating an exceptional divisor like that. Then in this geometry, there are rational curves meeting the boundary in a single point. For example, there is an exceptional divisor itself, which indeed is a rational curve meeting the boundary in a single point. And I also have the strict transform of the P1 fiber 
passing through this point, which is another example of rational curve meeting the boundary in a single point. Okay, and for more general log Calabria varieties, the geometry of these rational curves is more and more complicated. And somehow you need to take these numbers. So roughly you get numbers indexed by homogeneous classes, beta, or more precisely curve classes, which are really element in this monoid NE of X. And then roughly in the mirror construction, you use this, you use a generating series of these invariants. So generating series of this form, which are indeed the natural coefficients for the mirror family. So it is a reason why the mirror family live over this base constructed from power series in curve classes variable. It's because the construction exactly involves power series in curve classes, which are generating series of counts of curves. And in nice cases, so for example, if u equal x minus t is affine, so if you have some kind of positivity assumption on the boundary, then you expect, so it's proved in some cases, but I will not go into the details, you expect that this mirror family, which a priori is defined over this kind of formal completion, actually extend over something which is not formal, but which is some honest algebraic family over some honest algebraic base, which is just spec of the monoid ring of the monoid of effective But if not, then you might only get this formal family. And then in general, I guess it's a tricky question to know if you can get something better than formal, like analytic, but then in some, it becomes a deep question about convergence of power series of uh, curve counting in vines. Okay, so is, is there any question at this point, either on the first part, the cluster story, or the second part, this is a uh, mirror construction story. There are no questions in the chat for now. OK, so I will continue and now I will ask the main question of this talk, which is how to compare these two stories. So comparison. So for example, let me start with the X cluster variety. And as I reviewed in the first part of the talk, up to co-dimension two, and I will always ignore that. For now, you can realize this X cluster variety as a complement X minus D, where XD is some log Calabria variety. The Calabio pair obtained by blowing up some explicit hypersurfaces H inside some explicit toric variety X sigma. In particular, you can apply the general gross Zibert mirror symmetry construction to this particular log Calabio pair. And then you get this mirror family.
a check over SPF C double bracket any uh, of X. But on the other hand, you have this for Gontra of duality. which essentially tells you that by combinatorial duality on the combinatorial data defining the X cluster variety, you can define the A cluster variety. And so now the question becomes, what is the relation between these mirror family to the X cluster varieties Define applying a define a special case of the general growth zebra construction based on the enumerative geometry of these rational curves. And on the other hand, the A cluster variety, which is something that's defined in a simple combinatorial way. So maybe the first remark is that these two objects that we want to compare, is they are not exactly of the same nature. The A cluster variety is a single algebraic variety over complex numbers, whereas this mirror family is a family of non-compact Calabria varieties depending on some formal parameters. So to compare them in confidentiality, we will have some work to do, and it is part of the contribution of our paper to even find the correct statement in confidentiality. So let me first say that there is some kind of easy case. So if this X cluster variety is affine, then in this case, the mirror family is not something formal. But some honest algebraic variety over some big algebraic base, which is simply spec of C double bracket any of X. And in particular, now this base is some kind of toric variety, which contain a big torus. So it's inside that there is a big torus. And you can simply look to the point with coordinate 111 in this big torus. So just a unit of this torus. So let me denote this point by one. And then it makes sense in this setup to look at the fiber of the mirror family over one. And then the theorem, which was essentially, which is essentially due to Kiel and you, which were studying this question of mirror symmetry for cluster varieties under this assumption of affineness. So they prove the, some of the easy to state result that the fiber of a one of the mirror family of X is isomorphic to A. Okay, so it's a particular a clean statement. Under the assumption that X is affine, you really have a mirror family over some base, which is some toric variety. You look to some of the general fiber of a point in the big torus, and this fiber is a function of dual A cluster variety. So 
So what the question we want to address is what to do in general. If we do not assume X are fine. In this case, your mere family is just something formal, a priori something formal over this space. And you still want to somehow relate that to A. So maybe I should do a kind of picture of the base for spec C double bracket any of X. C thing is some kind of toric variety. And in the affine case, you have some mirror family over this full base. And then it made sense to restrict over one and over one you add the A cluster variety. But in general, if X is not affine, you only have some formal family defined in a formal neighborhood of the torus fixed points of this toric variety, affine toric variety. So in general, there is no way to see directly A in this family, but there is some hope to see some degeneration of A, some appropriate degeneration of A. So what am I trying to say is that on one side, you have some formal family of varieties. On the other side, you have a single variety. So to compare them, first of all, you should replace this single variety by a family of varieties, and then there will be some hope to compare these two families. And there is a natural way to uh, deform A and to put it inside the family. is something called the A cluster variety with principal coefficients. And uh, it is a family over some affine space, which is spec C bracket N plus where n plus is the direct sum over i of n e i. So recall that we had some lattice n with some basis e i, and n plus is just the monoid, the positive cone spanned by the basis element e i. And so I can look at the corresponding monoid algebra and the corresponding spec, and this thing is some kind of affine spaces. Uh, to the power something. And it is defined by uh, deforming the blow up definition of A. So A is obtained by blowing up uh, equations of the form 1 plus Z to the VI equal to 0. And there is a very simple way to deform that. You simply put an extra parameter ti in front of this coordinate. And now you get a family of varieties where the ti has a coordinate on C space. So this thing produces a family which over one is just A and over zero. So if I said ti equal to zero, the equation of the blow up I want of the locus I want to blow up is one equal to zero. So I'm blowing up the empty set, meaning I'm doing nothing. And so in this case, uh, I keep a toric in a calabrian pair and the complement is just a torus. So actually this aprine is a flat degeneration of this A to a torus. So here yeah, the torus C bracket.
And if I want something which looks like a formal family, I can look at the formal completion of this family. Uh, around the origin. Okay, so now it should look a little better in the sense that my mirror family is a formal is a formal family over some base. And now I have deformed A. I put it as a fiber in a family, and then I also took a formal completion along a particular fiber. So I've also produced some formal family out of A. So now the two objects that I want to compare looks a little more alike, but still they are different. So, uh, for example, these bases are different, so I need to explain how to relate them. So I will essentially finish by explaining how to compare these two bases, which will allow me to state the precise result. So the point is that you cannot directly compare these two families. Before being able to do that, we need to prove some non-sure statement that this mirror family extend over a bigger base than expected. And then inside this external mirror family, it will be possible to find this degeneration of A. So to do that, we need to use the fact that the base of the mirror family is made of curve classes on X. So we need to know a little bit about curve classes in X. But by definition, X was obtained as a blob of some trig variety along some upper surfaces inside its boundary, toric boundary. And so the space, let's say, so the group of all possible curve classes on X will be the group of curve classes on X sigma, like just pullback of curve classes on X sigma, direct some one dimensional lattices generated by EI, where the EI are exceptional curves. So in general, I am blowing up co dimension two loci in X. So in the blow up, I have exceptional divisors, which are P1 bundle over the locus I'm blowing up. And these exceptional curves are the fibers of this P1 bundle. So there are the extra curve classes which come from the blow up. And uh, what is involved in the base of the mirror family is a modulate any effects of effective curve, which is contained inside the subspace any x sigma direct some z of ei. Because essentially, if I have an effective curve in x, it's, it's um, pushed forward to x sigma will also be effective. So here I can put effective curve classes in x sigma. And now what I want is to make this thing appear. I want to have this n plus appear somewhere to make the connection between here and here. And the point is that there is, there is a natural embedding of n, n e x sigma direct sum n plus here, where I map an element AI in N plus, so uh, to the curve classes minus AI EI.
So what I'm saying is that inside all possible curve classes in X, there are the ones which are effective curves, and there are the other ones which are the form effective curves on X sigma minus non-negative linear combination of the exceptional curve E i. And now what I want to do is to glue the two target varieties, uh, which are spec of the monoid rings of these two monoids. So I want to glue spec C bracket any of X and spec C any X sigma direct sum n plus along spec C any X sigma direct sum Z of E i. And it makes sense exactly because of this diagram. I have these two monoids inside the big ambient monoid. So it will give me the exactly exactly the data to glue these two toric varieties together to get a non-toric variety. And now we get a picture like that. I will get but when I glue two affine toric variety together, I will get some non-toric, sorry, some non-affine toric variety with two torus fixed points. And so here I have essentially spec C any of X, whereas here I have spec C any X sigma direct sum n plus. And so for example, on this picture, just to give you some, so this locus here that I'm drawing here will be spec C any X sigma. And the mirror family by construction, it's something living over the formal neighborhood of the torus fixed point inside spec C any of X. So at the beginning, my mirror family lives somewhere here. And our first uh, theorem, okay, maybe I keep the picture. So the theorem, is that uh, the mirror family canonically extend over some locus that I will draw in green, which is the formal neighborhood in C's toric variety of the of C's locus and C's locus. So at the beginning, a priori, applying the general growth zipper definition, you know that your mirror family live over C's locus. But what you prove is that actually we are something much better, the family live over all C's green. Region. And now, how is it useful? How does it allow us to state our main result? Is that now in this picture, I can look to a point which is away from the original region. I can look to the point which is the one, the unit inside the big torus of the target variety spec C bracket any X sigma. And I can restrict this extended mirror family to over this point, some over this point in this direction, meaning I'm considering a, sorry, I'm considering um, a slice which is here. 
So what I'm drawing in black here, it's exactly isomorphic to SPFC double bracket N plus. Right, because here I have N plus, this part I set it to one, and then I have the formal completion in the transverse direction. So I get exactly a family over C space. And now we are good because our extended A cluster variety is exactly something living precisely over C space, SPFC NE plus. And so the second part of the theorem is that C is extended mirror family. Restricted to this blood to this black slice is isomorphic to this a prim hat cluster variety. Okay, so on this slide there is a summary of the statement. We start with the X cluster variety. You apply some general mirror construction, you get something formal living near this point. And, but to make some connection with the A cluster variety, you need to know that your family extends over this bigger green region. And once you know that, you can restrict to this black locus. And on this black locus, you see something which is related to the A cluster variety. You see something which is formal completion of the degeneration of the A cluster variety. Okay, so this picture is a, a precise relation without any affineness assumption between on the one side the gross Zibert mirror construction and on the other hand the XA uh, for bunch of uh, combinatorial uh, duality. And I would just take one minute to say one word about the proof. So the gross Zibert mirror construction, as I described very briefly, takes into input some enumerative geometries, some count of curves. Rational curves meeting the boundary in a single point. And uh, in the construction, this enumerative information is organized into a algebraic structure called a scattering diagram. And this scattering diagram constructed from enumerative geometry is called the canonical scattering diagram by Gross and Zeeberg. On the other hand, cluster varieties has been studied by Gross, Akin, Kiel, Konsevich. Using a combinatorially defined scattering diagram called a cluster scattering diagram. And so uh, to prove our main result, which is about relating C story and C story, we go through relating these two algebraic structures, these two scattering diagrams defined up in different ways. And here some essential input is a previous work of uh, Argus and Gross in a paper called the higher dimensional tropical vertex. which kind of give a combinatorial description of the canonical scattering diagram for local ideal varieties which can be obtained by this blow-up operation starting from toric varieties. And so what we are doing in our paper is to apply the result 
to the particular local labial varieties which are relevant for cluster varieties. And then uh, you use that to make a comparison between the canonical scattering diagram and the cluster scattering diagram. And once you know how to do that, you can prove the extension result, which follows from the combinatorial description of the scattering diagram. And then you can prove the comparison. So I am already over time, so I will stop there. Thank you very much. <laughs>